too close for comfort. But I guess that's when you have money, you just... Don't start stinking on me now, Florida. We're Aaron and Brandon, a van life couple traveling around the U.S. with the goal of visiting 50 national parks. This adventure has taken us all over the country. Most recently, Kentucky to visit Mammoth Caves. So we're gonna be back Mammoth Caves for sure. A stopover in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and a severe traffic jam in Florida. So we've been in standstill, like we're parked right now, traffic, for maybe 30 minutes. Brandon's driving. He's just in the back. He's getting us some snacks. He just went to the toilet. Like, this is why I love living out of a van. Eventually, we had to make it all the way to South Florida to visit both Biscayne and the Everglades National Parks. But first, we had a pit stop in Pompano Beach for a workcation. We are now in Biscayne National Park, but this last week we spent an incredible week in Pompano Beach, Florida, and it was just amazing to relax, hang by the beach, get some work done, and really just like recenter ourselves to finish out the rest of this road trip and the last few national parks that we have to visit. So today in Biscayne National Park, we are getting out on the water. We're taking a boat and snorkeling tour. Cue the B-roll because I don't know how much good content we'll have, but a lot of underwater shots. So here you go. Biscayne National Park is unique in that 95% of the park is underwater and it's made of four ecosystems. Coastal mangrove hammocks, Biscayne Bay's shallow lagoon waters, coral limestone keys, and the third largest offshore reef in the world. But because of high winds, we couldn't snorkel at the coral reef, so to the mangrove trees it is. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know what that was. It was like a stingray kind of thing. <laughs> oh! I'm going back to the boat. I'm going back. Too close for comfort. Too close. I'm going back. <laughs> I don't think we're very good at snorkeling. <laughs> We were on the island of Boca Chita, which was owned by the Honeywell family back in the 1930s. They bought up this island and it used to be their party island. So they would come here, party with all their rich friends on their yachts and just go crazy. Cause I guess they got bored of Miami, which is very close by. So they needed their own private island. It's actually a really interesting story about this iconic lighthouse. The Honeywells built the lighthouse and lit it one night and then the next day, the Coast Guard came over and they're like, no, 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 you cannot just build a lighthouse and light it. There's rules around lighthouses. So the lighthouse was only ever lit one time. I guess that's when you have money, you just blow it off on whatever you want. Oh, and this is the end of this trail because bridge is under construction or bridge is just broken. The footage from snorkeling is probably very chaotic. We really had a good time, but we found out we are not good snorkelers, especially in two feet of water. You just feel claustrophobic. We had a great time. We saw really cool fish. We saw a barracuda. We saw a bunch of angelfish, and Erin actually also saw a stingray, and it freaked her out. It was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Party Island is more our speed, I think, 
while I would love to be out on a yacht like that, walking around is also just fine with me. If you haven't had a chance, check out our new merch. It's a Live Alternatively line. Um, if you're a patron, you get 15% off. So check out our Patreon if you're interested in joining us there. I'm repping the new stuff and Aaron is repping our original look. So if you like that look or this look, check out the website and pick up a piece of merch. in Florida near Miami. This seems like such a fun day or weekend activity. Bram, we gotta get ourselves a boat. Yeah. That's next. That's After next. van life, we'll do boat life. Comment below if you wanna see us try to attempt boat life. We dried off, warmed up, and we are so hungry. We worked up an appetite while we were snorkeling. Whenever we can't find a harvest host or a place on iOverlander, our go-to has become Cracker Barrel which believe it or not is a good spot. There's about four other vans parked right near us. So that always makes me feel good that we're probably not gonna get kicked out. So this is home for the night in the Cracker Barrel parking lot. There's definitely worse places to be. Cracker Barrel is a good spot. And if you don't feel like cooking, then you just get food from Cracker Barrel. But we're gonna cook. We're gonna make some quesadillas. when you're hungry you learn how to make quesadillas really good and really fast we've just been making them and eating them at the same time hopefully we'll have a good night's sleep here and then tomorrow we're hitting up the everglades see you in the morning we just passed a sign that said elevation four feet never seen that before. Normally we're at parks and it's like 4,000 feet or something crazy like that, but the Everglades is obviously very unique for being swampy. Don't start sinking on me now, Florida. Just started the tour, barely left the parking lot, and we saw our first crocodile. It's a crocodile because we're still in salt water. Everglades National Park is home to one of the largest wetlands in the world. But the park is best known for its mangroves, sawgrass prairies, and freshwater slough that draws water from Lake Okeechobee. It is home to endangered, rare, and exotic wildlife. just finished up our nature boat tour. We had a great guide. He was telling us all about the wildlife trees. We only got to see two baby crocs and one big croc. Baby croc, doo -doo 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 -doo. All that means that we'll just have to continue being on the lookout as we go through the Everglades. For now though, it's lunchtime. because this is such a different side of the Everglades that we did not see on the boat tour. We got to look into the mangrove trees when we were on the boat and see all the wildlife, but we didn't get to walk through it, so I'm glad we're doing this. It's called the mahogany hammock because a lot of the trees compete for sunlight here, causing kind of canopy overlap that is kind of like a hammock. For instance, this one tree 
grows all the way over there, came all the way over here and is finding this little hole for sunlight right here because it had to find the sunlight in the best possible way. Super cool. Look at this one. That's a hammock, eh? I remember learning about this in middle school science. Now we are heading south for our 49th National Park. Before we hit Dry Tortugas National Park, we are going to do something that we've been wanting to do for about five months, which is slow travel van life in the Florida Keys. Key Lago, Montego, baby, why don't we go? We'll see you in the next episode where we will be van lifing in Florida. Catch you then. Disruption, injury, or theft is punishable by fine up to five hundred dollars or imprisonment for six months. Wow! I think I'll pay the five hundred dollar fine instead of six months of imprisonment. Well, let's just not destruct it or anything. Yeah. Okay, we almost had a freaking huge bird, like hawk or something. It was huge, and it was right in front of the windshield. Oh my god! This was the garage where they kept Rosie, the, uh, the elephant that was just at their beck and call because that's what you do when you're rich. You just have an elephant that takes care of you and brings, carries your golf clubs around. What? <laughs> carries your golf clubs. That, yeah, apparently Rosie did carry their golf clubs around because they had a three hole golf course on the island somewhere. Like what, why? What, why do you need an elephant? <laughs> Tell me about a perk of van life, Brandon. Perk of van life. Um, your home travels with you. So when you're stuck in traffic, you just get in the back and uh, hang out. And you're not really stuck in traffic.